All right, so in my last video, I talked about Viggle, and I had AI Warper, the guy who I mentioned, uh, his video actually went viral, by the way. He watched my video and he told me, man, you gotta talk about how to use Viggle and Comfy UI to get the best results. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Okay, so I had to interrupt myself because some of you may not even know what I'm talking about. So there's a thing called Viggle that allows you to put a, a video input and also an image as a reference and it will animate that image. I talk about it in this video right above, so you can check that out to see how that works. I will also be using Comfy UI and if you're not familiar with Comfy UI, I have a video on that as well. So you can check the link to that in the description or above as well. All right, back to what I was talking about. I'm gonna be sharing two workflows today. One is by AI Warper. It's the one that you're seeing right now. This is pretty much AI Warper's workflow. I just cleaned it up and made some minor changes to it, but it's basically the workflow that he gave me. And he wanted people to know that the auto cropping section of this workflow he got from a person that goes by Anime is Real. So shout out to Anime is Real as well. And I'm also gonna give you a workflow that I did. And this one is very simple. It's like way more simplified. This I think works well for up close shots. The other one does too. This is just if you want a very simple setup, you have this as well that you can mess around with. So you have that option, but I'm sure a lot of you are gonna want this one because this one has so much to offer. All right, so let's take a look at what's happening here. Right in this area, we have the full final output right here. Down here, we have the cropping part. It's basically just auto cropping and following the subject. As you can see here, this is a very wide shot. And normally if you try to generate a shot like this, this will look pretty much like mashed potatoes, like all mushy and no details. But when you crop in, then you can add all those details and make it look super, super clean. Right here, you have the output after it's been run through this workflow. And on the left, you have the animation that came straight from Viggle. And as you can see, the one from Viggle looks quite rough. Uh, and in the right, it looks like extremely clean. So this is a very powerful workflow. This is gonna be like a game changer for a lot of people. However, I think the biggest limitation is the quality of Vigo animation because the quality can vary, right? And even though Comfy UI is fixing a lot of issues, if the input's really, really bad, then there's nothing Comfy UI can do about it. You'll have this workflow. This is pretty straightforward. You put in your mask in this section right here you load up your video. This is an alpha mat right here. And I'm gonna teach you how to create one of these in a little bit using DaVinci Resolve, the free version of DaVinci. And down here we have the Viggo animation with the background from the original video. And here in the prompt section, you have two options. You can use this prompt window right here, or you can use a batch prompt schedule. I believe AI Warper used this for his video. Like this is his original workflow. And if you come down here, this is how he scheduled his video. So there are parts where he scheduled it to be the front face and then parts where he did side and then rear. Um, he says he's not sure if this really helped, but he did it and, and maybe it did help when the subject was turning around to schedule it like this, but he can't say 100% if it really helped or not because he didn't do the testing. And I haven't really done the testing either, but I didn't really add a prompt schedule. I just used one frame like you see here. For me, it works fine, but you can always mess around with it and see what kind of results you get. So let me show you the original input that I used. It's this guy dancing. He's turning around. Another thing AI Warper told me like, hey, if you don't do a person turning around, then people are gonna call you out on it. And so I was like, okay, well, let me find one person is turning around a lot and uh, also is moving really fast. So this is why I chose this clip. And then Viggle gave me this. As you can see, the image quality is not good, but it's tracking a lot of the body parts very well. So that's what you're looking for. It, it's okay if it doesn't get all the details right. It's okay if it looks kind of blurry a little bit, but if the movements are very clear, like you can see where the hands are going, you see where the feet are going, and also there's not a tons of ghosting around the character. What I mean is like a bunch of little like parts where it's a little bit transparent. You don't really want a clip like that. I mean, sometimes you can't help it, but if you can avoid it, then that's gonna be a good thing for you to run through Comfy UI. So this looks really clean. Image quality, not great but the movement is 
really good. So this was a great clip to use. Okay, so we have to create an alpha mat and you might be thinking, why do I need an alpha mat? What's, what's the purpose of this thing here? And it serves actually many purposes. Uh, one is that this is how it tracks the subject. So here I'm showing you an example of how the cropping works with the alpha mat. As you can see, you see a close up, then you see a far shot, right? And the reason you're seeing that is because I added a white block right here. Just for demonstration's sake, I added this white block to this alpha mat. So basically what it's doing is instead of cropping just this area right here where the white is, so it sees this white block here and it says, okay, well, this has to be bigger then. So it starts to crop a bigger section right here. Um, and that's really not what you want. And this is why sometimes if you have an alpha mat that's not so clean, then you might run into certain issues like this. We are gonna go into DaVinci to create an alpha mat. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And there are ways to create alpha mats inside of Comfy. There are nodes for that. But for me, they're not always reliable, so I'm not gonna teach you it. If you really wanna dig deeper, you can probably find some workflows somewhere online, like maybe even searching YouTube. Uh, where they have this workflows. If you can't find one online and you really want a workflow with it so that you can add it to this, then let me know, maybe I'll make a video about that. And also the alpha mat allows you to render something with a background and it does not affect the background, just the subject. So DaVinci is a free editing software. You don't have to do it in here. You can do it in any editing software, but I'm using this one because there is a free version and you should be able to do what I'm about to show you in the free version of DaVinci. All right, so we're gonna come here. We're gonna go to editing, bring our green screen footage in here, and it's gonna ask change project frame rate. Go ahead and put change. So then we're gonna bring our footage down here to the timeline, and then we're gonna come down here where it says fusion. We're gonna click on this media in node, and then we're gonna press control space so that we can get the select tool window to pop up, and we're gonna type in delta keyer. And now we select the delta keyer, we come here to the right, and then you're gonna come here where it says color background. You're gonna select this little eyedropper tool. You're gonna to press it and then you're gonna to drag towards the screen right here. All right, so it took away the green. Uh, let's make it one screen so that we can see the whole thing. Right now it's split into two. So we're gonna come here and it's gonna make it one screen. You can move up and down if you scroll up and down. And then if you press control, you can zoom in and out. And then middle mouse to move it around like this. And from here, you may think, okay, we're done, but not really. Because if we come here to view mode and we go to mat, you might notice it's not completely white. So how do we fix that? We wanna make sure that this is completely white and your mask might also have some white outside here as well. So let's go over here to where it says matte. And then there's this thing called threshold right here. And you can mess around with this threshold right here. And right now it's not doing what we want. So you have to come to this other side and there you go, boom. So you see, we still have this text here that might cause some problems. So there are two things you can do. You can try to still mess with this threshold right here until it goes away. And hopefully it does not affect your subject in any way. So you can do that or you can come here to color and then we're just going to cut this out. So you come here to where it says window and then we're gonna select this square. I already lined it up earlier. Align this so that it's right on top of where the text is at and then you're gonna come here you're gonna right click and you're gonna click on add alpha output and you're gonna come here to this little blue square and then you're gonna pull it out and then put it right there in the alpha and so it should be gone and then if you come back to edit it should be gone obviously it all depends on whether your subject gets in front of the text or not right so yeah now i have a clean mat and then we can export this by going to delivery naming it save it wherever you want to save it Make sure you have all the right formats. This default format should work. Add render to queue, and then you press render all, and then it should render it for you. And so now you should have an alpha mat. There's one more thing you can do if you want to. Obviously, this is up to you. So we have our original clip, right? All right, we put that there, and we come here back to Fusion, and we come back to View Mode, and go back to final results. And then we come back to edit. You should be able to see your animation on top of the footage. And you might notice that your character is not fully covering the original person and the footage. So you can see a little bit out here. If you're fine with that, then we can just leave it as is and just put it into comfy. But if you do want to remove the subject, there is a way to do it in DaVinci, but you need the studio version to do that. There is a free method, kind of a quick and easy way to do it and that's through Runway. You can create a free account in Runway. The only catch is that you can only export in 720p for the free version. If you, if you buy credits, then you can export it at high quality up to 4K. 
this is optional by the way you don't want you don't have to do it this way you can find other methods of doing it if you like to, to me this is really quick so you go here to edit videos you go to in painting and you bring in your footage I, I already had my footage in there and all you really got to do is just come here to adjust your brush size however like I might need it a little bit bigger but you want to cover your subject like this oh shoot so I have to leave it press or else it's going to do the job already. So I have to leave it press and then I release the mouse. And then with only one frame that I do this, it's going to impaint the rest, but it doesn't do it perfectly as you will see right now. See, it's doing a pretty decent job there so far. Right here is you see hands, you see a lot of ghosting, unfortunately. But if you think about it, your subject may be blocking a lot of this ghosting. So it might be that it's still very useful for you. Maybe not. This is just an option. You, when you export it, uh, if you have the free version, then it's going to tell you, you to export it at 720. And then if you don't care too much about the quality of the background, you just really care about the quality of the subject, then you can always do it this way and export it. Or if you want to buy credits, then you can obviously go higher and get a higher quality background, but you can export it. And when you export it, uh, you come here to your assets and it's going to tell you that it's exporting and it tells you percentage. Once it's done, you export it, put it back into DaVinci, and then you're not going to see the guy in the back as much anymore. You might have to mess around with the scale. If it's at 720 and your video footage is higher quality, then you might have to like it might turn out like this and you might have to just scale it up and again you export it and once you export it then you're ready for comfy ui come to comfy ui load up your mask in here load up your video footage in here make sure you have all your models like once you get this workflow it's going to show you the models that's being used for this if you don't have them just look for them on zipatite.com or uh, just google search some of these models we oh another thing is uh lauras do really help uh, i did test it out with using uh, ip adapters and i'll show you the results i got it's really bad footage but i try to make them like the armored titan from attack on titan and uh, it looks really bad the original one but then i ran it through my workflow and it made it way better but this is without anything this is without a Laura and this is without an IP adapter. This is with a Laura of oh, that the Armor Titan. This is with a IP adapter that I used and this is another IP adapter that I used. So you kind of get an idea of what is possible when using IP adapters versus um, using Laura's. For me, Laura's I feel like work the best but sometimes you might not have a Laura that you want. So you might want to try an IP adapter if you're not getting the results that you're looking for. As you may notice, these workflows do not have control nets except the control gift control net. And people are always looking for this model. It's, it's kind of confusing to find, but I'll, I'll include a link in the description where you can find that. Um, besides that, you should be able to find the rest through manager. And if you're familiar with Comfy, you should already know how to find nodes and stuff. So yeah, so that's it for today. Um, again, I want to give a super special thank you to AI Warper. Um, he was super helpful and he, he was super generous with the information. As Vigo just keeps improving, it's going to make this process even better. So yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, please. And like always, take care. God bless. Peace.